Good morning. This is a regular Sunday morning service, family service, here at the Midwest Buddhist Temple. I start each Dharma talk with the COVID-19 numbers because it is so important that we focus on this pandemic and how it affects so much of our lives right now. In Illinois, we are supposedly past the peak, but still there were 5,583 new cases yesterday for a state total of 3,400,000, 3.4 3 million cases. And there were 27 more new deaths yesterday for a total of 38,518. For the country, there have been 86 million cases with a total of 1.1 million deaths. These are just numbers, statistics, but there are family, relatives, and friends who have been greatly affected by each incident. And our hearts go out to all who are affected. It is good to be back at Midwest this week. Last week I was at the New York Buddhist Church um, with the retirement of Reverend Ikeda in New York. I'm the supervising minister of the New York Buddhist Church and we'll have to be going there a few times a year. <clears throat> but there is so much going on in this world, or so it seems. Actually, we have to remember that there were always so much going on, but with so much communication, like the radio, television, the speed of the internet, it just seems that we are bo bombarded with so much. We have the war in Ukraine, the COVID pandemic, of course, the number of mass shootings like Buffalo and Uvalde, the controversy over the LGBTQ plus community, and there's today's pride parade. Then now there's the overturning of Roe versus Wade and the abortion rights debate. I'd like to take a few moments to talk about the abortion issue. Often the first question asked is, how do Buddhists view abortion? On the surface, it is an easy answer because most Buddhists would agree that life begins at conception and thus we should respect and protect all life. So at first glance, Buddhists should be against abortion. But when we look at the bigger picture, there seems to be conflicting issues. What about rape or incest? What about illness to the fetus? What about the health of the mother? and so on, things to consider. Then we look at the environment, environmental conditions that a baby might be born into. Will the parents be able to feed the newborn? Are there mental issues with the parents? And will the baby be harmed if it is born? And so on. And then there are the legal political, and social issues. The legal issue is easy. Laws are made by human beings, and laws are mostly written by lawyers. But laws can be changed. The way to change laws is to elect officials that make or change the laws. The political issues are difficult because human beings, as human beings, we are all limited. We're limited and selfish. Whatever political view or views one may have, it is soon apparent that we get stuck and we get hard-headed 
in our political views. And soon, the attitude is, don't confuse me with the facts, my mind is made up. And we close down, and we even stop listening to another view that is not my own. As for social issues, it gets confusing because there are so many social issues that need our attention. The climate change, voting rights, or racial injustice, the income, income gap, hunger, and so many other issues. And all of these issues need to be agree, addressed in our society. For now, I ask that we change our mindset from political or legal or social issues to human issues because social issues get confused and mixed by political issues. By human issues, I mean, can we look at the situation from the viewpoint of human rights? What are the human rights in any case and anything involved? What are the issues? As for my human rights, I mean, the rights that are free of laws, free of politics, free of social norms. So what are the basic human rights? What it, from that, we can determine what is right or wrong from a human point of view. We all know that slavery was brutal and cruel and eventually ended in the United States. But slavery as a human rights issue was totally wrong, and we know it. We know the incarceration of Japanese Americans during World War II was declared legal at the time, but was also totally wrong. So using the abortion issue, we know that there is no right or wrong answer in Buddhism. Nothing is simple as black and white. Everything is various shades of gray. Buddhism gives us guidelines, but does not give us dogma of what we have to do. We know that Buddhist teachings tell us that all life is to be respected and protected. We know that Buddhist teachings tells us that we all have the freedom to make up our own minds and to follow our own path. So there is no right or wrong. Then how do we know what to do? Each of us has to decide what is more important. What is more important as a human being? What is right or wrong from a human rights point of view? By saving the life of an unborn fetus, is that more important than allowing a woman to determine what happens to her own body? Do any of us have the right to determine what another person has to do? And I have to add, on the political side, why do men get to determine what a woman has to do? You know, the, the outspoken critics all seem to be older, you know, males. <laughs> we have to ask, why does one determine someone else's, what someone else, you know, is supposed to do or has to do? From a human rights point of view, each person should determine to make their own choices. Thus, I think we would choose to allow a woman, a woman to make her own choices. But how one makes choices may be different. It goes to show that each of us 
has to make up our own minds and then determine what to do. This is our karma, thoughts, words, and actions. And I would hope that all of us think about what we think, what we believe, what we say, and what we do. I would hope that we can get beyond the legal, political, or social prejudices and find the human issues that are so, so that we can find the spiritual answers to these turbulent times that we live in. This applies to all how we view the global pandemic, the war in Ukraine, our stand on gun, gun control, our stand on LGBT plus community, and the abortion issues. Eight hundred and fifty years ago, Shinran Shonin, our founder, also lived in turbulent times. The issues of the day back then were famine, not having enough to eat, civil wars, warlords constantly fighting. Shinran faced discrimination, persecution, and exile, and so much more. And yet he found the courage and had the insight to see that the Nembutsu practice to recite Namo Amidabutsu was his spiritual home. Everyone has lived in turbulent times, so in many ways the times have not changed. There's always something going on. There's always something that we need to learn to deal with. How do we deal with the issues of the day? Today we have to deal with our issues of today and hopefully we have the courage and the insight to find our spiritual home, to find our spiritual home to deal with all these issues. Namo Amidabutsu, with gratitude and kindness beyond words.